Now that friendly local game shop, it ain't always so friendly. Baby's first neck beard, or how I got scared away from tabletop gaming for life. Now that's a sad story already. Don't let anybody chase you away from something you actually enjoy. So this happened years ago when I was 11. My mother was trying to get my delinquent butt into some nice, quiet, nerdy hobbies. So she ditched me at her friend's tabletop gaming shop club thing. So I'd learn something that I could do inside and away from the dangerous teen boy population. Bro, you 11, what, what? Part of me wants to explore that statement further. Part of me wants to never think about it again. <laughs> As an 11 year old kid with no clue how anything worked, I got to sit at the noob table and be very slowly talked through the basics of Warhammer by some rando experienced players. All was well, at least until the neckbeard arrived. As they always do, he smelled you on the wind or something weird like that. <laughs> He introduced himself as a scholar. He was starting an English degree in September, making him 18 at least. God, I hate this already, I hate this already. No, please stop. He was that kind of spilling dough fat that gave him the impression of just being half melted. I remember being able to smell him. Yes, full on neck beard. I'm just trying to hold my breath until he starts talking to me. Bro, you got nothing in common. Step away from the child, sir. Sir! And then I had to shoot him. I don't know. He was coming right for us. <laughs> I lie to you not. This grown-ass dude offers me from his pocket uh, a lolly for the lolly. Nasty fuzzy lollipop. Nasty fuzzy human being. What is going on, OP? I think your mom didn't consider this plan all the way through. <laughs> This is not going well. I don't know what that means. I was not the kind of kid that watched anime. I was the kind of kid that ran around outside and occasionally tipped bins over, you know, for the lulls. Oh, just kid stuff. It, it means you're a cute little lady. Oh yeah, dude. Maybe if you're the first one to acknowledge her womanhood, she'll sleep with you. Can we put him against the wall right now? Two sentences, I'm good. Ugh. Now, I'd never been called a lady in my life because I was barely five foot and barely in bras and I wore my hair in two plates or bunches most days. Thank you. I, being an idiot child, wasn't thinking STRANGER DANGER quite yet because the idea of someone so old and sweat stained actually coming at me in that way did not occur to me at all. I mean, naivete is real, but yeah, it's not gonna protect you from this. This whole situation is just the worst. Seeing that openly coveting a child wasn't working, Neckbeard then went for a different approach. Um, uh, do you need help? Girls aren't usually too good at this game. Oh yes, I'm the lord of plasticine armies. I bequeath upon you my help. Now take a knee and say, oh, thank you so much. Nope, nope, I'm good. <laughs> Neckbeard's greasy skin glistened in the electrical lighting as he heaved himself to his feet and leaned over me to position the, I guess you'd call them figures, in front of me. There was contact. Uh, <laughs> There were rolls, a hand on my waist. I was not having a good time. <laughs> Call your mom. It's time to go. It took me way too long to realize how creepy he was being because I had no idea how people were supposed to act in these situations. Nerds were like an alien species to me. Honestly, treat him like anybody else that would do this to you. Put you in a comfortable situation. Just because he's older? Don't pay that no never mind. Kick him in the nards, bro. <laughs> Maybe this was just how nerd life worked and uh, I should be taking pointers. Yeah, I was a gullible little person. <laughs> I mean, you're 11. I, I can't blame you for that. I got a daughter who's 11. How is this the first story I'm already seething so hard? 
I realized because he asked for my number and I clarified that I was in fact a minor. He clarified that he would in fact make dating him worth it and said that he would convince me no matter what. Is everybody else in the game shop like okay with this? Somebody needs to run interference. This is, oh God. Neckbeard said that he uh, respected high school girls more than most because he was an intellectual. Oh, God. Uh, my spine, I just can't. I'm not strong enough for this today, you guys. I'm sorry. I wasn't in high school yet. When I refused, he grabbed for me. My wrist probably, but I leaned back as far as I could to get the hell away. He asked if I'd prefer his house. <laughs> no strings attached. Read the room. <laughs> no. I overbalanced, fell off my stool, yelled something along the lines of, Get the hell away from me! And exited, pursued by an employee. I ran about halfway down the road and called my mom in absolute tears. I never went back to that shop. Pretty sure we got that guy banned, though. I haven't glanced at a tabletop game since. Yeah, trauma is real. I'm sorry you had to experience this. Honestly, this is a failure on everyone's part except for OP, okay? She's 11. She don't know what's going on. The mom kind of ditches her at a game shop. The neckbeard, of course, the guiltiest of all. And then the employees of the game shop who don't intervene until the situation has already escalated beyond control. Honestly, I wish you would have accepted the lollipop from him and rammed the stick into his jugular vein, but I think the beard provides like two armor class to uh, the neckbeard's neck, so it might not work as intended, but uh, my brain is thinking that way because life RPG, hey! Another episode going up this weekend. If you haven't subscribed over there, do go ahead, check it out. Pinned comment, etc., etc. Also subscribe if you uh, are enjoying the content. Let's get into another story and hope that it doesn't go as terribly as this one did. More game shop stories. Rage quits, redskins, and razors. Oh, you know I love that alliteration. Even seven years ago, they were alliterating out here. Beautiful, delicious. Edit, accidentally hit submit before I was done. Sue me. <laughs> I'm back with a few more stories. These two take place in two separate game shops. Olympian and Epics. Epics stories are recent and take place in the same location as my last post. Olympian is a store that I used to go to that got mentioned in the comments of my last thread. And I did try to dig through and look for these posts he's talking about. They're deleted. Web Archive doesn't have them. So I guess it's just lost to the sands of time. But that's okay. We still got this one. So first up is the story of Red Skin. But before that, a little history lesson. <laughs> Before broadband internet was so pervasive, if you were into anime, you actually had to go to a store and purchase it. Most of what was available online was fan sites and low-res images that could be downloaded over a 56k or less modem, and the same went for uh, the adult images. And just like how lots of old video rental stores had adult sections, Lots of comic shops had uh, adult comics sections, and Epics was such a store. You had to ask for it and show ID, but they kept a cardboard box of those types of books under the counter. <laughs> Just in a giant cardboard box. This is so seedy. How many coom covered hands have touched this? <laughs> I don't like it. This is how I first saw Redskin. He had, for what was 2003-ish, normal neckbeard attire, frumpy parka, unkempt greasy beard, smudged sunglasses, the works. Yeah, them some ugly sunglasses, ain't they? <laughs> Redskin was the victim of some kind of awful skin condition that meant his skin was covered in huge pinkish crimson patches. Eczema. They looked like they could have been chemical burns from somebody splashing something on him, because they looked like a splatter, but I think it was probably just an unfortunate birthmark or skin disease. Eczema. How many times am I gonna have to say eczema? It's eczema, right? <laughs> it was on his arms, his face, everywhere. I just want to say I'm not here picking on people with skin conditions, but this dude was something else. So, 
While I was hanging out at the shop one day, a teenager at the time, Redskin came in and asked for the box. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> the employee behind the counter looked unhappy, but he pulled it out as asked. The shop had a couple of steps as the floor rose about halfway through, which he then sat down on with the box next to him. He sat there for a while, going through each of these adult comic books with one of the creepiest grins I've ever seen, chuckling like some sort of creepy movie villain. <laughs> Why are you drawing attention to yourself? Have you no shame while you're doing that? Ugh. I play D&D in the store every week during some of my high school years. The DM would let just about everyone play, which was usually fine, but one day Redskin joined our group. He spent the entire session creeping everyone out, but even more memorable than that was after. And I was hanging around in the store waiting for my dad to pick me up, pre-cell phone days, just kinda had to hang out until 5.30, and this guy spent the whole time hovering around me. I'm not sure what gender OP is, honestly, but either way, I must say bad touch. This guy's bad news biz, it's time to pack it in. So our neckbeard, Redskin, regaled our OP with tales of his previous character, who was a female elf with big boobs. And that he liked to play this female elf with big boobs and how he had left several gaming groups because the DM wouldn't let him play a female elf with big boobs. And it went on and on. <laughs> I wish I could count the number of times that he actually said that exact phrase. He had an accent from a certain neighborhood of my city that meant he said boobs like boobs, almost using it as a punctuation mark. Colorful as he was, thankfully I never saw him again after that. Okay, good, that's relatively safe, could have gone worse. Next, we go to Olympian, where we have Twiggly. <laughs> Twiggly, named for his resemblance to a stunted Twiggy sapling. To say that he had poor posture would be a little too simple because he maintained that poor posture. His slouch seemed almost rigid and practiced. <laughs> he had, and still has, about two inches of poofy, curly auburn hair, and always manages to have about a week's worth of stubble, mostly on his neck. He looked like a child, but I know that he was pretty close to 30. Yeah, and he got scoliosis. Don't pick up people with spider bifida, OP. <laughs> One day I walked over to a table where Twiggly is toward the tail end of a 40k game with a fairly ordinary person, while the staff member, Chuck, watched on. I don't remember what Twiggly was playing himself, but he was getting housed by some gray knights. His lips were tight, and he did not look happy. His opponent and Chuck were trying to perk him up and get him to have a good time, but after he flubbed a big roll, Twiggly lost it. Twiggly picked up his red Game Workshop tape measure and started slamming it repeatedly into the table while letting out a shriek that I can only really describe as sounding like the cry that the Dilophosaurus in Jurassic Park made right before it ate Nedry. <laughs> Chuck told him to calm down and Twiggly leaned across the table shouting, I do it, I won't. <laughs> Uh, yeah, South Park was pretty big at the time, wasn't it? I don't know why you gotta freak out like this, man. Just like, win or lose, maybe just try having a good time with the games that you're playing. Why else would you play it? Anyways, Twiggly quieted down pretty quick when Chuck threatened to kick him out, adding, And it'll be for good if I spot any damage to this table! With the threat of expulsion and banning, Twiggly finally got it back together after a few minutes, but after another bad turn, Twiggly threw all his dice across the store with another shriek and stormed out, leaving everything behind. Bro just rage quit like in real life. <laughs> you spent hundreds of dollars on this stuff. Are you sure you don't want it? When I asked Chuck if we should at least gather up his things, Chuck said not to worry about it since it was close to closing and that quote, his mom will come in and get it tomorrow. 
The final story for today is just a quickie and doesn't even take place in the game store. All false advertising. <laughs> but I would see this guy all the time on the same block as one of Epic's old locations. For those of you who think the neckbeard look is something recent, I first saw this guy in 2002. He was the brother of a guy that I hated, so I rarely spoke to him, but I'd see him around town wearing a black trench coat and a black fedora. He always kept his hair in a ponytail. You can almost bet it was unwashed. He had a wispy goatee and the most elegant neck beard I think I ever saw. And he would ride everywhere on a Razor scooter. <laughs> <laughs> Which was the style at the time. <laughs> I don't know why. Is this a fully grown man on a Razor scooter? Bruh, couldn't be me. <laughs> Not in this life. A grown man in a trench coat <laughs> riding a Razor scooter everywhere. His fedora must have been glued onto his head. <laughs> uh, oh, the mental image is so good. I asked him one time why he didn't just get a bike. He said something about his trench coat and then said, eh, bike has no class. Chicks want a guy with class. Yeah, you know what's the classiest thing of all? A car. <laughs> You're an adult, dude. <laughs> oh. oh, he then took a swig of his big gulp, hopped onto his razor, and scooted away into the sunset. One of God's very own prototypes. Honestly, it's been going on for much longer than 2002, but I guess this current style did develop then. Uh, there's a painting of the irritating gel- I'd like to talk about this in the video, actually. Neckbeards and nice guys have been around since the beginning of time, being just as shameless as you please, but we didn't quite have a name for them. But now that we do have a name for them, yeah, I really do enjoy digging around that particular brand of trash fire. So uh, let's get another story in here. We're still looking a little short, so we'll move into the next one. More tales from the game shop. Yep, <laughs> this happened a bit before the I'm too fat to wipe incident, which was covered in the stink beard video. I made that video a long, long time ago, but it is still bobbing around the channel. And I do remember that story for obvious reasons. <laughs> My town is a weird mix of rednecks and soldiers with quite a bit of overlap, and redneck beards, which can get a bit rowdy at times. There was a group of guys who would come in every Saturday and play EDH, a format of Magic the Gathering that's typically played with more than just two people. I haven't played in a while, but I think the name has since become Commander, with the rules mostly staying the same. This group occasionally would also bring in body pillows and have their body pillows play in their multiplayer game. <laughs> oh god! Uh, wow. You get something new with neckbeard stories every time. <laughs> it's horrifying. I'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt and say that yeah, the body pillow thing was totally just ironic and that they just wanted to try out multiple deck options at once or simply add more variety into a format that, at the time, didn't really have much interest at the shop. I was at the register computer talking to my friend Gerald, a uniformed on-duty cop. His walking beat went past the hobby shop, and he'd often stop in to chat about video games for a bit because that particular beat was, uh, fairly boring. We both heard some loud swearing and then an almighty crash coming from the card table area. Was it not also accompanied by a re-OP? <laughs> Tell me the truth. Both of us ran over there to find two players rolling on the floor, wheezing and huffing. Adam and Ben had gotten into an argument, and Ben had grabbed Adam's body pillow, a rather tasteful Asuka Langley pillow. Might be a neckbeard, but I don't know. Evangelion is still pretty good. I mean, yeah, everybody says that, but everybody says that because it's pretty true. <laughs> And then he stomped on the body pillow. <gasps> Blasphemy. Adam, defending his waifu's honor, then threw Ben to the ground and began stomping on him, asking him eh, how he liked it. <laughs> uh, you're like a bunch of fourth graders in a 20-year-old man's body, please. Ben grabbed his assailant's leg and pulled him down to his level, and that's when the cop and I showed up. 
Officer Gerald grabbed Ben, and that's when Ben made his second mistake of the day and sent a meaty slap right into the policeman's face. Well, now you're going to jail. <laughs> this made Gerald go full on Super Saiyan, lifting Ben up and throwing him across the room. Oh boy, that's a lawsuit. <laughs> this was no mean feat considering Ben's bulk, but Gerald was an artilleryman in his previous career and he kept that muscle. Adam, realizing that the cop had just saved his butt, lumbered to his feet and thanked him profusely. After a few minutes of listening to each side, Ben declined to press charges against Adam and Gerald hauled him off to a waiting squad car. Yeah, Adam ain't gonna press charges, but the police officer, he definitely is. <laughs> Following that, I decided it best to just ban body pillows from the store. I'd been waiting for some incident to happen so that I could, since my boss, the owner, told me that I couldn't ban anything without a good reason. Ben pleaded down from assaulting an officer to just a misdemeanor assault charge, and he got a suspended sentence. Both of the two combative redneck beards were banned from that shop permanently. I mean, very unfortunate situation, but looking through the eyes of a neckbeard, what choice did he have, really? <laughs> if somebody throws your waifu or your fedora to the floor, then you have to fight. Probably just try to avoid slapping a police officer in the process because yeah, <laughs> now you got a record. Congratulations. A wild story indeed, but still relatively short. Uh, one, one more and then I'm gonna get out of here for the day. Thank you guys for riding along with me, of course. This one also short by the same OP. Game Store 3, The Bottle Incident. During a Friday night magic tournament, I would normally farm the job of administering the tournament out to someone else. I didn't know the game very well, so I thought it best to leave that to somebody who was up to date on the rules and errata and such. Alright, then what's your game though, OP? If you're working in a game store and you don't know magic, like, <laughs> what's going on here? Everybody and their mother should at least know how to play magic. As for the rules, just, just read the card. <laughs> it's fine. My job, therefore, consisted of hanging out at the register until the Swiss rounds were over and people came to buy some boosters and snacks and I was doing this just browsing my usual board at work websites and talking to a friend when a player came up to me and said something that still creeps me out. Uh, that guy in the blue hoodie just peed into a bottle. <laughs> uh, excuse me? <laughs> OP says, what? Yeah, he put it down his pants empty, and he pulled it out full. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't even whip it out. He stuck the bottle inside of his pants. <laughs> oh, you're killing me for real right now. Sure enough, where he was pointing, there was a half full 16 ounce Mountain Dew bottle sitting next to the guy's backpack. He didn't even throw it in the trash. <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, I waited for their match to finish, and then I pulled that guy aside. Initially, he denied it, but when I suggested that he take a drink from the dew, <laughs> he suddenly came clean. <laughs> he was so concerned about his opponent cheating, and to be fair, his opponent did have a reputation, but had never been caught, and he didn't want to get up until the game was over, citing fear that his opponent might mess with his deck while he was gone. Despite his pleading, I had to ban that guy. <laughs> I can't have people peeing inside of Mountain Dew bottles inside of this game shop. <laughs> uh, oh. Just some simple game shop stories and my soul's been compressed into a fine powder. <laughs> I loved every single one of these. You might have noticed I'm trying to do like more themed videos. So if you got some suggestions for what you'd like to see, comments open, of course. Like, subscribe, whatever. If you haven't, share the video around. I'd be super appreciative. Follow me on all the things, of course. Many links in the description. Thank you to my gorgeous, wonderful, beautiful, generous Patreon patrons and YouTube channel members. I will see you guys again tomorrow. Please, please always remember that you are loved, you are worthy, you definitely, definitely deserve it.
and don't pee in Mountain Dew bottles. <laughs> I'll see you then. Until then, friends. Bye-bye.